I like to to tackle the garden, um, the gardens and the plantings and where things go. And Malcolm looks after the camellias. So he does everything there is to do with the camellias. He prunes them back and they're his thing. So we each have our little sort of bailiwicks and it, it, go, it works all right. Tammy, wife of the late Malcolm Fraser, reflects on the couple's gardening habits. The undeniably distinguished pair were opening up their Merrick's property to the public two years ago for an open gardens event. The Fraser's' relationship endured a life in the public eye, 28 of those with Malcolm in Parliament. Malcolm Fraser, the former Prime Minister of Australia, has passed away at the age of 84 after a short illness. A family statement said he died peacefully in the early hours of March 20 and they asked for privacy. All those for an election, all those who want Mr Whitlam to get the hell out of Canberra. Fraser's highly driven political career truly began in 1975 when as opposition leader he was commissioned as caretaker PM after the Governor-General dismissed Gough Whitlam's Labor government. A few months later, Fraser and his team won the federal election in a landslide. And we're going to keep it that way. His eight years as the 22nd Prime Minister were mostly characterised by their shift towards stability following the tumultuous Whitlam years. But Fraser's government also saw large changes to the social fabric of Australia, increasing the number of multiracial migrants, opposing apartheid and installing important cultural services like SBS. Our commitment to migrants will continue. Post-arrival services for new citizens have been expanded greatly. Malcolm Fraser has been in Parliament serving Australia for 28 years. In 1983, however, the Australian public forced Fraser to pass the leadership baton on to Bob Hawke. I therefore take total responsibility for the defeat of the government. Fraser's passion for social work and human rights grew from his political retirement at the age of 52 to the point where he started criticising current politicians, even liberal ones. The state of the political debate in Canberra is wretched. There's been a race to the bottom of the barrel on refugee asylum seeker issues. He headed up Care Australia, continuing to apply his recognisable conviction to his charity work. Here, during an interview for Care in 2008, a publicity agent interrupts to correct something, much to the exasperation of Fraser. You know, I was just making a point of clarification. Well, you do not interrupt an interview when I'm being interviewed. Do you understand that? In December 2009, shortly after Tony Abbott was elected leader of the Liberals, Fraser resigned from the party, saying it was no longer a Liberal party, but a Conservative one. In 2013, he endorsed Green Senator Sarah Hansen-Young in an ad for her re-election. I'm not sure how many Australians would trust either party with total political power at the present moment. Senator Hanson Young has been a resolute and fair-minded voice. Fraser's political perspective was regularly sought after. He was most recently on television just this week in the first instalment of an ABC documentary series, Making Australia Great. If Rex Connor had borrowed the money through regular channels, would you have supported the venture? If he'd been able to, um, we would have no reason, no substantive reason for opposing it. Fraser's passing has prompted thousands of messages on Twitter. Indeed, the much-respected public figure had his own highly active account. Just this month, he's tweeted about raising women's pay, an anti-Netanyahu rally, even America's rough winter. A sense of Australian identity. Malcolm Fraser was a politician, social justice activist and human rights advocate. He's survived by his wife of 59 years, four children and grandchildren.